Welcome back, everybody, for another AOE2 D E D O T D A and K C M P G N. Yeah, all the acronyms. Second scenario, no man's land. I am going through this so slowly, apparently, because I already know several people have completed, like, most, if not all, of the campaigns, even though it's only day two. But, uh, I, I had a power Come outage. To the east. Do God's work and be yeah. rewarded not only with nebulous concepts of salvation and eternity, but also with land and plunder. That was the promise of the Teutonic Order, and the reason that they could rely on a steady supply of battle-hungry knights. Christians of low noble birth, who were easily tempted to try their luck in Lithuania. It was a scheme as ingenious as it was devious, and far from the holy mission that they spoke of publicly. After the Saracens ousted them from their holy land and stripped away their Middle Eastern estates, these crusaders now planted their iron heels on our backs to sate their lust for blood and plunder. When Algirdas was forced to deal with the defiant city-states of Rutinia, wreaking havoc on the Lithuanian borderlands, the opportunistic Teutons saw a chance to invade our homeland yet again. Believing that western Lithuania lay open while Algirdas was occupied in the east, they marched into our lands. They were not expecting to face Kestutis, who had stayed behind to hold the heartland, but Kestutis was expecting them, and lay in wait, eager to teach these sword-swinging marauders a lesson. Oh, man. Yeah. Put an end to the Teutonic Order's assaults by destroying at least two of its castles. Uh, burn down the monasteries in Bryansk to rob the city of its relics and force its inhabitants to surrender. And the same thing in Kursk. Uh, restricted to a pop limit of 200, and it doesn't say that I can't reach Imperial Age. Uh, while Algidas is set up has set up camp in the southeast, uh, Kestrutas led his followers to the west to invade the lands of the Teutonic Order. A large river separates both camps, preventing your forces from uniting initially. Okay, so it's like uh, one, one of those ones where you have, you know, two camps and you can't connect them. Uh, yeah, docks and ships cannot be built in the dead of winter. Lithuanian knights and Laysai gain additional attack from garrison relics. Uh, consider subduing the weaker Ruthenian cities before marching on the formidable Teutons. Bryansk, in particular, is easy prey and will not advance to the Imperial Age for the time being. Uh, okay, so Al Algirdas has camped to the east to invade Ruthenia, while Kestrutis moves against the Teutonic Order from the west. The Teutonic Order has three large fortresses spread across the center of the and west of the map. Each is heavily fortified and guarded by heavy cav, Teutonic knights, and crossbowmen. They will also make siege rams and other stuff. The Livonian Order is an ally of the Teutonic Order and will likely assist its fellow Crusaders by sending its uh, armies of knights and stuff. Uh, and they're in the northeast. Uh, and then to conquer Ruthenia, Algirdas must subdue the hardy inhabitants of Bryansk and Kursk. Uh, Bryansk has swordsmen, archers, and light cav, while Kursk is knights, boyars, and spearmen. Uh, word has it that Tatar refugees from the Kipchak steppes have fled west from the Golden Horde, seeking Algirdas and Kashutis' permission to settle at the Lithuanian border. Once again, deal with the haughty crusader bandits who foolishly invade our realm. I leave Ruthenia to you, Algidas. Neither the fanatical order nor the battle-hardened Ruthenians can oppose us. If we remain united and keep our ranks disciplined, onwards! Okay, so there is... I mean, this is another very expansive scenario. I was kind of expecting to be able to... Okay, well... I don't know. Lumber camp or something. It's a really bad lumber camp. Okay, so yeah, we have split bases. 
we can advance to the Imperial Age. So already in Scenario 2, and we can have Imperial Age, you know, 200 pop limit. That's pretty wild. It's like, where do we go from here? But I am sure we shall see. So yeah, I, uh, you know, with Lords of the West, I completed the campaigns within a couple days. Like I know a lot of other people have with Dawn of the Dukes already. It's currently the evening of day two. Uh, but I, I, uh, there was a big storm uh, where I lived yesterday, and uh, the power went out for a little while, so wasn't able to do much recording. So that's why the Civ video is delayed, where I talk about the new Civs. Uh, but don't worry, hopefully that will come out tomorrow, and if not tomorrow, Friday. And uh, it's just me talking about the new Civs, it's nothing too wild, but I do have some experience with them. Obviously, I have talked decision about them. You know, I've played several games with each. So I have some experience, you know. So I hope that you'll find it somewhat insightful. At least as insightful as any Ornlu video can be. Okay, so those are the two tawns. And here are the, I guess, Ruthenian cities. Uh, do we have any stone? Yes. Yes, we do. So, let's see. Uh, the Tatars are in Feudal Age, the Livonians are in the uh, Imperial Age, everyone else is in Castle Age. And we got a, you know, decent array. The two Crusader Orders are Teutons, and the other two guys are Slavs. Dang. Permission to settle here and escape his wrath. You know what? Let's be friends. You know, it's all about making friends in life and not not making enemies. Yeah. Yep. So we definitely want to go grab some relics, make lots of knights and laci and all that stuff. Probably a lot of laci. Emi Majado. But you know, for the time being, just boom, boom, boom. I guess we have to consider, do we want to, you know, attack the uh, both sides at once, or do we just want to focus on one side and then maybe attack the other, uh, you know, once the other one is defeated? You know, you know what I mean. And I don't know. We shall play it by ear. Get that other boar. Whoa, that guy's going all the way around. Okay. Okay, there are the Teutons. Whoops! I thought I told you to go back to the town center. Where the heck are you going? Oh my god, these dumbass villagers. Sigh, sigh. Sigh, 
Okay, we need to build some more town centers. So let's do that. Oh, hey, look, these guys are these guys are hanging out over here. Look at them doing their thing. Uh, build another one over here. I feel like the Teutons are going to be the scarier army, so I'm kind of inclined to attack them first. Although, wait, these guys give relics. So I guess that's the trade-off, right? You can either go for your stronger enemy first, or you can go for the ones that hold the relics to boost up your cavalry. So maybe in the spirit of, uh, you know, having fun and getting lots of attack, we should go do that. Bowsall. Okay, out of that, finally. Already have lots of eco upgrades. Okay, Kursk is in the Imperial Age. That's pretty quick. They seem to be a lot stronger than Bryansk. So let's actually just build some stables for now. Okay, gold mine over here. And there's a gold mine over here, but let's take these deer. And we shall be up to the Imperial Age before too long. Oops, let's get a market. Also, I, I guess these guys are on the eastern side. Makes sense since they're fleeing from the east. So this, in theory, should make it even easier on this side, you know? Okay, let's get up to him. Let's get ready to rumble and stuff. Oh, what? Sure, let's just put you on auto scout. Oh, it's a fortress. Let's also build a mining camp. Those are pretty good in this game, I hear. Okay, start with some knight production. <laughs> These men at arms are going to be so valuable. Not. Oh, actually, their monasteries are kind of exposed. Aspasiroshas. Okay, we're, there. we're definitely getting there when it comes to villager count. I mean, this map is pretty darn huge. It just seems like the scope of this campaign is very, very large. Oh! Oh, well. Uh, these guys are an Imperial Age, but they don't have any imp upgrades, like, at all. Oh yeah, they researched human mercenaries. Hey, it's human mercenaries, that tech that nobody remembered existed. Sure, let's get our 10 free elite Kipchaks. They are free after all. I 
Mix in some halbs. Still feels like I have no gold income. Whoa, why can't I farm here? It's weird. Get our eco upgrades. Oh yeah, we don't get uh, blast furnace with this anymore. Did I have to do anything with the Livonians? I forget. It doesn't seem like I do. Okay, any more stone in the vicinity? It's gold. Oh, look at that guy. Well, that's where you are wrong, hopefully. I really hope you're wrong. All right, so now it's time for them to attack us. Guess we'll make some Lee Sai. Meanwhile... Oh, the free Elite Kipchak hotkey, at least for me, overlaps with my trebuchet hotkey. And for some reason it prioritizes the free Elite Kipchak upgrade, or unit. That's wonderful. Yeah, sure, mine there. Uh, I mean, they do have a lot of stuff. Let's grab Paladin. Yeah, let's just not throw away uh, units. Get tower shields. Do that. Get that. Hey, I know that guy. Could he have uh, constantly been speaking in the third person? Yeah, let's definitely go grab some relics. Oh, crap. Uh, well, you know, that's not going great. Hmm. Let's just go more that way. I mean, this is a lot to, to manage at once, right? Okay, that's just one relic. But yeah, man, is it a nerf to Lithuanians that they actually have to grab relics just so that they have the equivalent of generic fully upgraded paladins? I mean, it's probably necessary, considering that Lithuanian paladins, you know, with, what was it, 14 plus 8 attack? 22 was pretty silly, but yeah. Okay, let's grab a relic. 
Oh, I've lost a lot of villagers, man. Those are fully upgraded elite Teutonic Knights. Oh, look at these guys. Their army, not so scary. Oh, these guys. Feels bad, man. I mean, I am kind of losing a lot, to be honest. I do... I, I really need some siege. Alright, has this finally been dealt with? Good. Good job! Alright, kind of getting our act together. Ugh. Unfortunately, Lithuanian Siege is not very good. Oh yeah, Boyars, now that they have uh, 8 melee armor. That was a couple patches ago. Well, against Slavs and uh, Teutons, you know that the armor-ignoring ability of the Latus is going to be pretty darn useful. Eh, let's just mine in harmony together, shall we? Chemistry. Now, thankfully, Elite Latus is one of the cheaper Elite upgrades. Although, speaking of uh, castles and unique units, I need some more stone. There's some stone over here, but it's pretty, you know, in, it's in dangerous territory. get uh, those guys just to stay alive a bit better. Uh, our villager count is still honestly not that great. Tier 1 farm placement, of course. Okay, got down, I uh, got the castle down. Just build a monastery in their monastery so we can monastery while they monastery. Or something like that. Yeah, let's make lots more Leisai over here. Just destroy that. Now, we have to destroy the monastery of this place. Or both of these places in the east. Uh, we should also grab uh, murder holes, honestly. Oh, and you do have gunpowder. That is quite handy. I mean, Lithuanians have a pretty darn good tech tree. Okay, I definitely had a monk here at some point. Oh, and there's the last monastery. I see. Hey, where are you guys going? But yeah, you know, now with two relics, we finally have the equivalent of fully upgraded paladins. And our halbs are kind of stuck with mediocre upgrades. Would 
love to mine some more stone, though. Maybe there's more stone over here. But now our population is finally climbing. Whoa, 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 hold on. I just built this monastery, you jerks. Oh, you're trapped. Now I don't have a blacksmith. Didn't I have some villagers over here not too long ago? Alrighty, let's take down that last monastery. Yeah, 16 attack on the latest. It's pretty darn high. Especially considering they ignore armor. Now, I don't know if they're going to resign. Obviously, it'd be pretty nice for us if they did. Oh, I guess I accidentally ordered them on the wrong side of the river. Uh, let's start prepping some workshops over here, because I imagine that blue is not going to be very scary, considering that they uh, are not an Imperial Age. All right. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, and the maps do connect, but we have to... Oh, I see. Yeah, we have to defeat purple, because I'm sure this gate is locked initially, so that's why all these villagers are just now going to this side. I see. I like this map design. Anyway, time for blue. Bryansk. Oh, whoops. Still have my wrist brace on from my surgery. I actually take it off tomorrow as I'm recording this. It's so exciting. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. You're not me. All right. You. You. And you. You. Oh man, my army is like absolutely everywhere except in useful places. Oh. Don't do that. What the heck, man? Get some trebs too. We could get some bombard cannons as well, for sure. That Tatar yoke? I was pretty sure it was the Mongol yoke specifically. Alright, at this point. Oh, thank you, Kursk. You're a real pal. Um, oh, there's lots of gold down here. Wait, weren't the Livonians hanging around at some point? What were they up to? Oh, it's this thing, the Crusader Knight. They look awesome. Oh, whoops, whatever. Yeah, let's just try and get a bunch of latest. Wait, if this is the one castle... Uh, whoops. <clears throat> Whoopsies. 
Well, aren't I just a goofball? I want this castle and this castle to specifically be on the same hotkey. I have a lot of food. Thankfully, the market prices are very accommodating. All right, one more relic and we will have maximum relic power boost or something. I mean, this is definitely a pretty complex scenario in terms of, I mean, I guess it's straightforward in what you have to do. Like, you know, on the one side, destroy three castles. On the other side, destroy six monasteries. But you have to manage a lot of different things. Dang it. Thank you, Kursk. Oh, these guys don't even have a castle. These guys are plebs, man. Bryansk. More like Mimansk. Uh, let's actually repair these tribes. Launch a counterattack! Man. They're such haters. Okay. Oh. Oh, this is another crossing. Oh. Um. I don't know. The the forces of, of Ornlu, man. Nothing is more evil than that. Because you use the power of a uh, terrible micro, terrible macro, awful decision making, and somehow managing to not lose everything. Yeah, right here. You know they you knew they were spawning in over here. That's why I was highlighting it just a second ago. Uh, if you look at this terrain right here, you can't build up here. So it's guaranteed that you're not accidentally just placing stuff all around so that when the enemies spawn in, they'll, uh, the Knights of the Livonian Order have arrived in the north. you know, they'll, they'll be able to spawn in, rather. They even brought siege weapons? I mean, I really don't care. I mean, I guess this side has relics and stuff, but... Eh. Onward and upward, guys. Yeah, like, I really don't care if I lose this. I still have plenty of resources in the bank, except for gold and stone, but we are mining those. Oh, now Bryansk is in the Imperial Age. That took him a while. And, you know, the Tatars are helping us out and as best they can. Wait, whoa, 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 hold on. They're in the Feudal Age. But they have Imperial Age upgrades. What kind of cheaters are these? Yeah, but the fact that as soon as you destroy the specific buildings, uh, you get... Like, you, you instantly subjugate whoever you conquer uh, is obviously... It makes the scenario a lot easier than it otherwise could be, you know what I mean? All right, we're full full attack on these guys. Yeah, 
don't need to worry about destroying buildings. Other than the castle, obviously. Speaking of which... Let's get another one! Yeah, I, I like this scenario. It's a good scenario. I like the map design a lot, like I said. It would definitely make a good co-op campaign, since, you know, we are literally Algirdas and Kastutis. So, it's, I guess they didn't want to reveal it as a co-op campaign before the DLC came out, but, like, this makes perfect sense for a co-op campaign. Like, you know, one guy's Algirdas, the other guy's Kastutis. And another one. Nope. Oh wait, we actually have to defeat their army! Oh my goodness. That's so funny. I literally just realized that. I was like, eh, these guys, they're plebs. I don't, like, they're gonna just slowly march down over here. That is funny. Um, okay, so design note, I feel like these guys should have post-imp upgrades. Like, they're the big bad army that's coming in to bail out the, the, uh, the Teutonic Knights. Like, why do they only have Castle Age upgrades? Or I guess, I mean, they have Elite and they have Paladin, but, yeah. They should have the, all the Blacksmith upgrades. Imo. Yeah, but this isn't going to be an issue. Go get him! It's not even a very large army that they sent, honestly. I guess that would be my only uh, downside with this scenario is the Livonians are kind of kind of meh. Where are you guys even going? <laughs> we have repelled the Livonian assault. Yay! Is ours. Yay! But yeah, another pretty decently long scenario. Also, I like how Tatars are yellow from uh, the Cuman campaign. Oh. Volume. Had greatly underestimated the resourceful brothers. It seemed that Algirdas and Kestutis were invincible whenever they joined forces. Exasperated. The Teutonic Order was forced to give up its invasion plans. At least for a time. The war with the Order was a long and bloody affair. But in the end, Kestutis repelled the invaders. He was thenceforth known as the Steadfast for his stubborn defense and loyalty to his brother. Once Algirdas arrived to help, the brothers even managed to conquer several important Teutonic fortresses. But their quick triumph made steadfast Kestutis careless. During a skirmish, retreating crusaders captured and dragged him to one of the Teutonic border fortresses. Perhaps the crusaders even put chains on him like those that we wear right now. I like to think that they did. But 
In any case, Kestutis did not remain a prisoner for long. With the help of a loyal servant, he broke a hole in the three-meter-thick wall of his cell, while Algirdas distracted the Crusader guards with Dang. a feigned attack. In the chaos that ensued, Kestutis left the castle on horseback, dressed as a Teutonic knight. Incognito. Well, that was fun. Pretty decent, KD. I mean, it was definitely... This, was, this wasn't like a super hard scenario, but it wasn't a pushover scenario either. But yeah, like, Kursk got uh, full post-imp upgrades. The, the Teut Teutonic Knights, I believe, got full post-imp upgrades. Or at least, you know, mostly post-imp upgrades. I don't know. Still, good scenario overall. Anyway, guys, that was No Man's Land, and next up will be the Omelette of Death, known as the Tatar Yoke. See you guys then.